Hi guys, my name is Karsten Craning, and let's talk about stuff. So today we are going to be talking about some of my favorite, least favorite, and everything in between of my favorite spring summer 2020 shows. Um, we will get to the part two of the fashion and punk series, but just because it is menswear, uh, spring summer 20 shows are going on right now. I thought I'd make this video, give you guys my little opinions on what I think are my favorites, what I did like, what I didn't like. Just give you guys an overview of some shows to watch and what are usually the ones that are most important or most, you know, interesting. So to kick it off, I'm gonna have my laptop here open so I can actually see the show um, just as I'm talking. And let's start off with one of my favorite shows to dive into, one of the creative forces in fashion that's always fun to see is Rick Owens. Now my first shot, uh, thoughts on the show is that it was definitely a good one. I liked some elements of it, I didn't like some elements of it, but overall it was a really good show. Um, I'm a big fan of the industrial looking jumpsuits we're looking at here. They kind of remind me of his air cuts with the zippers on the upper thigh region. And it kind of feels like a spacesuit to me, especially in like the one look where it's in the cream color, which I thought was cool. Um, to go along with that, we also have the Champion collab, which I'm a little bit iffy about. Um, the sweater, for example, of the Champion collab has this altered silhouette to almost make it look like a baby onesie which is kind of questionable in my opinion. I know some people liked that and some people didn't. I am one of the people who was not a fan of that. Um, then also there are some really cool like Thunderbird um, inspired graphics on some of the champion stuff. And some of the coolest looks I think came from the pants and the boots with the layered bands on them. They kind of looked like the world's largest uh, rubber band ball, but in pants form and in the coolest way possible. I can see those selling really well, I, um, along with the deconstructed denim, which have the different materials and all the washes all patched up together. Those are definitely going to be two of the things that are going to be selling really well. I've already seen a lot of memes about the kind of banded pants and all that, and I'm kind of excited about those, I think. It was a good show overall, I liked it. Let's dive into the second collection, which is Takahiro Miyashita's The Soloist. I'm a big fan of his work. I love a lot of the stuff he's done. However, just because you love a designer and some of the stuff he's done doesn't mean you have to love every single collection. And this collection wasn't my favorite. I'm um, just gonna put that out there right away. It wasn't necessarily bad, it was just kind of eh to me. It wasn't something I disliked, but it wasn't something I was loving or was interested in either. Um, I liked some of the coats, definitely. They just, some of them came off with this weird Victorian vibe, as well as having these like helmets and weird hats, fireman hats, it was like British Victorian. Cone hats that kind of looked like they were from Tarzan. And I understand that like the meaning of the show was to kind of look into that like vision of the world that had all of that, like there was some sort of like childhood element he was trying to channel with it. But it just wasn't my favorite, um, especially with all the Victorian inspired stuff. It just didn't hit a bar with me. I like clothes that are wearable when it comes to certain designers. Like, I either like really avant-garde shows or really wearable clothes. And this was somewhere in between to where it wasn't super avant-garde. These more looked like costumes than anything and they weren't super wearable. Which kind of bothered me because I didn't feel like it was interesting. Um, I know there was a big message behind it, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, the print, the all over print stuff seemed out of place, honestly. They didn't go along with the rest of the collection in my opinion. That's just me. Overall, the leggings didn't like that. That were kind of like tights. It just kind of felt 
cost to me, and it, I don't know. Overall, I get, I'm giving this collection an eh. Um, yeah, I'm Anthony Fantano, and I give this collection an eh out of 10, but just not my favorite, yeah. Craig Green had a great collection. It stuck to his aesthetic really well, um, as well as having some of those favorite looks. Some of those favorite looks of mine were the ones that looked like the human body. Um, I'm just looking at them now, and he made it look like you could see the outlines of the muscles on the garments. Um, he uses really similar shapes, as always, and silhouettes from his previous collection, which have some boxy workwear looks, which we have all come to know and love. Um, however, he experiments with different materials this time, mainly transparent ones, and there's a cool motif in the collection of seeing uh, through the clothes, which he does by having some of this transparent material, as well as actually putting prints and kind of graphics on the clothes to make it look like you can see through them. Um, Love that. Uh, not sure I would wear the ones with the graphics necessarily, because it did kind of look like you're naked. Cool, but not for me to wear out and about. <laughs> um, but uh, there were also apparently snowflakes. Craig Green cut out an elementary school, jumped off his fridge into the collection. But it's cool, I vibe with it. Featured the Adidas collab, which is amazing. I want to have that released soon so I can buy a pair of those. The shoes kind of have these kind of scaly texture on them, which make them look like techno lizard shoes, which is what we need more in the industry, honestly. Okay, on to Comme des Garçons. I don't, how do you say Comme des Garçons? I hope I'm saying that right. Comme des Garçons. Comme des Garçons. Comme des Garçons. Garçons. Collection is Comme des Garçons un plus. Butchered it, gave it my best, but yes. Um, great collection. It sticks to Ray's vision with the um, um plus, um plus stuff as always. Um, the wigs were unsettlingly greasy, I will say that, but we have this collection which was great. It always features the um, uh, always kind of features these suits with shorts usually. Um, and I thought a lot of the jackets looked great. Um, the all over print jacket, and dress was a good example of how to do an all-over print that I think the soloist fell short of in many ways. Um, the coats with the gray North Woods kind of Twin Peak looking graphics on them were really cool. I thought the little black distressing was a nice touch. Thought that was awesome. Also the cropped jacket with the upside down V kind of look. Um, and it had this marbling effect, was awesome. I really like that jacket, um, thought it was great. So this tie-dye jacket that I like a lot, that has like these stripes that are like over the tie-dye almost. It's not tie-dye necessarily, just kind of like a multicolored thing, multicolored jacket with these black stripes that go over it was really cool, along with the leather jacket and dress combo that has like a print over it. Big fan of that. Um, one thing I will say about Comme des Garçons is that in the shows, the guys are styled in a very feminine matter, which is a big turnoff to a lot of guys who are just getting into fashion. Except what you have to realize is that that's just the show and how they are styled. That doesn't mean there aren't great things, um, especially the coats in the shows, which could be styled in a more masculine manner. And I think a lot of people, a lot of guys don't realize that. I mean, there are definitely some things which are more feminine, like the skirts and stuff like that. But I think there's some great clothes in this collection that can give off a more masculine vibe if that's what you're looking for and I would definitely check them out because a lot of the coats are really cool, really well done, 
well tailored. It's really masterful Ray's work. Le Garçon's Home, great collection. 10 out of 10. 10 Comme des Garçon hearts out of 10. On to my least favorite show of the bunch. I hated this. I genuinely hated this. <clears throat> this show was, of course, Vetements, which some of you guys like to pronounce as vitamins, which I also pronounce it as vitamins, only to be disrespectful to the brand. But, um, it was boring. The collection was just honestly really boring. Like, nothing makes me go, wow, or, oh, that is somewhat interesting. That's what we need. That's what I want to buy. That's what a consumer wants to buy. I get that the whole point of that moss is that it's supposed to be really deep and this anti-fashion. And at this point, with how much of the anti-fashion elements they brought in, I don't know who is going to buy this. And I don't know if anybody is going to buy this necessarily. In many ways, I feel like Vet Moss has become the thing they were making fun of for the longest time. And because nowadays fashion and streetwear have certain subsects that are really doing a lot with this style and aesthetic, I feel like they're making fun of it, but they're not self aware because they're literally just in some cases putting the clothes they want to wear on the runway which I'm not sure how that's self-aware especially this one look in particular and maybe that's the customer that they're trying to get but I'm not really sure exactly there are a lot of kids who like dress like that and I feel like that Mons is making light of that but do you really want to be laughing at your own customer and making fun of them I don't know, that's why I don't really like this Vetements collection because it does make you think in the anti-fashion sense that you're, oh, you're supposed to think about it, but <sighs> collection, um, I, things I did like about it were that the models had painted toenails that looked really out of place and some of, some of the like looks just screamed drain gang to me not in the best way. Um, yeah, just like, I don't know. It was in a McDonald's, which Demna had this huge point of it being deep because it was like the first time he experienced capitalism and that's great, whatever. But just imagine you're going to McDonald's and all of a sudden you're in a Vetmont show. Um, which is horrifying. That is the one place I think would be sacred where you could escape Vetmont's and it's awful, awful fashion. Hey, could I get a quarter pounder with- It's just, I don't know, like, some of the looks are just so, like, stupidly edgy and out there, like the ones that say global mind stuff on it. Like, it just, it's boring. It's so boring to me. I hate this collection. Enough said. Okay. Yang Li onto his two collections. I just kind of want to highlight the cruise one because I thought it was a cool project that I was actually looking into and it's been in the works for so long, like a year or two. Um, the cruise collection, which he like, pretty much he got all these models off of, I think it was WeChat and like talked to like 600 of them for a half an hour and had their portraits taken by, I forgot the photographer's name, and then he put them on the collection and like on the garments in a really kind of flowy, beautiful way, kind of similar to the undercover Martyr Parka Martyr collection. Really well done. Love the cruise collection for women's wear. 
Um, but then also onto his new season collection, which was entirely based off of his earlier works. Um, is a great example of something Raph's always done where he like takes his earlier collections and kind of reimagines them. This one, he, the collaborators he got to like reinterpret some of his earlier designs and make better are kind of crazy because he got like the guys from the Swans, uh, Godflesh, some really great bands. Not exactly sure how he did it. There's like a whole list of all the collaborators, including Jesus and the Mary Chain. All these like really great, um, super important bands. Not sure how he got all of them to collaborate. The collection is great, however, it's n a reworking. It's not super original in many ways, but I think it's a great chance for if you're, you've are you been a fan of Yang Li's work and you've missed out on some of his more iconic pieces and um, just wanted to buy them, like this collection is a great chance to do that because you get to buy some of the most iconic designs from him, but they are reimagined and made better in his opinion. And um, I would just really hop on this because Yang Li is a really accessible brand if you're trying to like get into high fashion. A lot of his stuff is on sale right now on Essence, which is a great chance to cop some really well thought out and amazing pieces. Not all of them are super complex which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's very cool um, to just kind of build your own wardrobe out of some of his pieces, especially like his trousers and pants are just really well done, great cuts, um, as well as he, if you're just wanting to get some fun little pieces to support the brand, there's like bags that are pretty inexpensive. Like I have a hat, um, there's also some t-shirts which are really inexpensive so i would just recommend with this opportunity to like get into to um get some more yang li some of the most iconic pieces from his collections the new raf simmons show which was polarizing for many um i liked it honestly i know i saw some conversations of people saying oh i didn't like it i didn't like how he used the old graphics and honestly, I was a fan of the collection overall. There were some things which I didn't love. The tees were really cool. I like that. They had these bright graphic tees with graphics on them and it looks like he waxed or painted them in an imperfect way. And some of the looks almost look like they're charred with a, like they were charred with fire, which I thought was great. I kind of like the idea of taking a graphic tee and then painting over it. So you can only sort of see the graphic. I think that's cool. Um, however, I wasn't a huge fan of the sweaters, which use the same American Recycling and Stoned America graphic. It just didn't do it for me. It was kind of boring, honestly. Really simple. Very much in that same vintage of older rap and what he's done. However, um, I really did like the coats, especially the leather ones. Also, the boots were really cool, the kind of rain boots, as well as the boots with the little writing on it. I'm kind of curious, kind of curious what those are going to be like and if they're going to be for sale, as I would be interested in copying those. Um, but overall, I like this collection, like the outerwear, liked the shorts, liked the t-shirts, didn't like the sweaters, but it was a good collection overall. So, my favorite show of the whole season was Undercover, and I really liked it a lot. Um, Undercover has been in a rough place for the past couple of years, I would say, in terms of its high fashion offerings. It's become really big with streetwear and the streetwear scene, and sometimes it can get boring especially with its t-shirts, I think. Um, but this collection was amazing. The recent undercover shows have been good, but not my cup of tea per se. They had a lot of Kubrick influence in them, which I know a lot of people loved, but I was not a fan of, but not that I hated it. I just didn't think it was something that I'd be interested in. This collection, however, 
was amazing. It was dark yet elegant. It's one of those rare shows where every single look I liked genuinely. Um, I could wear only this collection for the rest of my life, I think, because it was just amazing and yeah. Um, all of the suits were really well cut as well as having a variety um, in how some were more sleek, some were more baggy. Um, it was a really cool way to experiment with shape using the same black suit and tweaking the fit in different ways to make it fit your body in different ways. Also the spider web and Nosferatu graphics in the jackets and that were kind of tailored into them were really well done. It was extremely tasteful. It was a good way to keep the elegance while also implementing the image, which is often a hard line to, it's often a hard thing to really do well. Knitwear is done really well, as well as the leather jackets, which aren't completely leather. They have these, some cotton, some silk in them. I'm not sure what material, but they're not just completely leather. They're great. Also the pieces with the Cindy Sherman photography are amazing. Super well done in the way he implements those. Super well done in the way he implements those prints. Kind of reminds me of a more mature television collab which he did. Um, just the television collab but much better, more mature, more refined. June's work is really progressive and you can see that he's still learning and applying what he's done in the past and doing it better. And that's one of the things I love about this collection. Um, there are a lot of things which I think are gonna be grails for people and it's really beautiful, some of the pieces. I'm looking forward to buying some of these if I can. Um, a little theory of mine is that um, when you were looking at the overall collection, I couldn't get out of my head how much it reminded me of the Slint Records Spiderland. Just some of the elements such as the spider webs in the garments, Spiderland, as well as there being a song on the record called Nosferatu Man, which many of the graphics were based on. So whether or not, and also the dark photography, so whether or not it was actually inspired by the album, which I promise you it wasn't, I can dream, and I really hope it was, but it definitely wasn't. And yeah, this was definitely my favorite collection of the bunch. Comment below which was your favorite collection, which collection I didn't um, talk about, which you might have wished I did, um, what you're looking forward to copying, what you're looking forward to buying from these collections. If you disagreed with me, comment below. And yeah, my Instagram is Meme Saint Laurent, as well as my personal, where I have some more fit pics and stuff, is Karsten Craning. Join me next time, where we'll actually get to the Fashion and Punk series, where I'm a little bit more informative, and not just giving my opinion. And yeah, stay tuned, guys.